level up your hunting game and join the cause. Help preserve small town Texas hunting culture and become a more successful hunter by learning the best ways to squeeze the most out of your budget and precious time out in the field. Welcome to the Feed Bandit Podcast. Here are your resident bandits, Richard Kinchlow and Jimmy Byrne. Oh, God. Yeah, and apparently she's the same person who fell victim to the Dell, quote unquote, Dell called her, told her that the the Russians were trying to get in the (laughs) dirt. Are you serious? Did she like would she give him like her passwords and stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Gosh. And and of course, oh, whew, I gotta breathe. And of course, that one did and she actually caught wind of that one and was like, no, they they this ain't true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. My mom was like, really? You know, why would the of everybody in the world, why do the Russians care about your computer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it really was anyway yeah oh god so whew, i forgot about that um uh, yeah well okay so back on the topic here uh, <laughs> yeah so uh today we oh, are gonna start talk- oh oh no maybe not <laughs> all right well, I mean, I'm glad we can that's fine all right well howdy <laughs> folks welcome back to the feed bandit podcast we'll dive right in <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So we, we heard about the Russians trying to invade my aunt's email, and we heard about Tango the cat, who's probably still up for adoption somewhere in Austin. Uh, but that's not that's not what we're talking today. Today we're going to talk about a little old article called Hog Wild in the March 2022 edition of the Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, magazine and and let me tell you i we've talked about this magazine before um i absolutely love it i mean i i have taken this magazine since i was well old enough to read so a couple years now and it has always been one of my favorite hunting magazines yeah okay sure they talk about rocks and and state parks and say which you know hey i'm all into that i love it they'll uh, but you know, they, they'll do like a, a little, you know, butterfly section, all that kind of stuff. It is, I think it's just a really great, uh, a great publication and we're not being paid by TP and W folks. So, uh, if you've got, uh, if you're looking for a magazine to subscribe to, uh, which, you know, yeah, I know it was the Egon print is dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I highly recommend text parks and wildlife. Uh, magazine so you know we we talk about hogs damn near every time we we do one of these and uh this is i i love this little edition this this little piece uh the article is not very big and in reality the picture they have of this of this monster hog is really um a heck of a lot bigger than the article but it's called um it's called a hog wild and then the little subtitle is, which, listen, I mean, they, I guess they must listen to our podcast because how many times have we said this and quote, controlling these feral invaders provides a perfect introduction to hunting. Oh, yeah. I mean, is that not yeah. perfect? That's exactly yep. what we, what we always say. Uh, and, and it's, and it's so true. So uh, again, a, a really good piece. Uh, I'll summarize it for you, okay? Because you know you, you won't get this edition when you go and subscribe now. Um, you know, but it basically talks about how yeah, they're they're a phenomenal animal to hunt. Uh, it, it 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 talks a little bit about you know the fact that with the hogs, uh, you do not have to have a hunting license, but you do have to have obviously landowner permission and you also have to have hunter safety too uh which is kind of interesting now i that you that's kind of logical i guess but uh anyway I i'm thought surprised that, that they don't require you to have a hunting license just just right. to get the the fee you know? yeah i i i'm kind of there with you um and and the other thing is just that you know i mean I, I guess probably the number one ticket they give out is the whole hunter education thing. Um, so, and, and the other thing is like, I know on the back of the hunter, I, hunter education cards, 
you know, at least the old ones like mine from 1988 or whatever it was, you know, it says do not laminate. So you're going to carry this piece of paper around with you. I mean, I, I guess you do. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but allegedly, it's supposed to somehow tie into your hunting license, uh, kind of like a, the electronic medical record. But but I don't know that it's uh, it's done. Well, it, I have the uh, the Texas Park and Wildlife or the Texas Outdoor Annual app on my phone. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. This is the t- TP and W deal. Yeah, oh, it's it, great. It does, yeah, it, yeah, it does have my you know hunting license on there. And all does that it really? Stuff. Oh yeah. Lucky. I mean, if you you can do it. You just hook it, connect it to like your online account. Really? Basically. Okay, I did not know yeah, that. Let's see, see, I'm looking at it now. So, like, I have if I go on here and I go to like my account, right? It shows. All right, see, license years. It goes all the way back. Really? Oh, well, this goes back to 2010. Wow. It says uh, right now it says I have the Super Combo package and HIP certification. Oh, and a boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Interesting. 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 Okay. Well, I, I did not know that, but yeah, hook, hook your stuff up to that. Yeah. No kidding. I think I might do that. Uh, but before that, it actually, it's kind of ironic and kind of great timing. It talks about March being one of the best time to hunt hogs, which, you know, truthfully, it's like our, our good buddy, Daniel always says, when it comes to planting trees, you know, when's the best time to plant trees now? Uh, you know, when's the best time to hunt? 10 years ago. Now, (laughs) that's right. 10 years ago, you dummy. Um, yeah, no, so I'm really the best time to hunt hogs. It's a, it's a really common, it's a good answer, but or the a real logical one anytime, of course. You know, there, there's the, there's the downside if you're going to eat them, you gotta, you know, and, and, and uh, if you shoot them in the middle of August, you better get going. But, you know, our buddy Tyson, who does uh, a lot of, and hopefully we'll do some more this weekend. Uh, we are going to Rancho Bandito, having a group. Um, uh, at least we're gonna we're gonna try. Uh, but um, hopefully he will get out there and we'll, uh, we'll we'll take some piggies. But you know, there's been a couple times we shot some in the summer, and you know, I'm trying to think. Obviously, I would remember if we actually got sick from anything, and I don't recall ever getting getting sick from. A hog that you know sat in the back of a pickup a little too long because we we're having a little too good a time, but um, <laughs> yeah, I uh, think yeah, it, back on wood. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm sure you know, as I th- bad, I was bad stuff, obviously, could come from yeah. you know, oh, yeah, that kind of stuff, but if you're you know, within reason, yep, uh, yep. <laughs> Oh yeah! Do everything oh, yeah. in your power, obviously, to clean it as soon as possible. Ab- and, you yeah. d- absolutely, you know, and that—that's yeah, actually on the, the temperature outside too, right? Big, you know, fast, you know, that right. Stuff. And that's actually that's actually a real a good point. That that's kind of a good discussion topic there. You know, one of the things that that I know I've done it multiple times. And I think every time I do it, it curses us, but. I've always got, you know, and during the spring and summer when we're out rolling around uh, and I got spare time, you know, one of the things I've been doing is I carry, uh, I carry uh, actually one of the, one of the, the uh, gut knives that I got from the sportsman's box. I keep it with me and kind of my ride around pack, um, my ride around bag. And I keep three or four Ziplocs with me and a, and a set of rubber, uh, a set of cleaning gloves. And I have always wanted to, if we stop and see a hog, you know, I'm going to try to take the back straps out at least, yeah, you know, or yeah. something of that nature. And then obviously just, you know, throw them in your cooler, you know, because you're going to have a cooler for your, your water and milk and the other things that you like to you know consume. And great quantities. Pedialyte. Right. Mm-hmm. Pedialyte. Thank you. That That's a really good one, actually. It used to good be vibe. Gatorade, but now it's like, <laughs> yeah, it right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. So uh, that's that's kind of a little uh, I, I think that's a really good tip. And, you know, in reality, if you're really covered up with hogs instead of, you know, you could just skip the whole Ziploc bag part and uh, just have a dedicated ice chest you carry with you you know, full ice. And, you know, if you've got some, you know, bottled water, squirt those things down, try to get as much hair off as you can and then throw it in the ice chest um, and then got start the bleeding process. And that God, you can go around and, and really clean house. Um, and, and let me tell you that hog meat is, is fantastic. Now, of course, you know, trigonosis and commercially available pork is, is a thing of the past. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the ivory coast or, or Kenya, it's still a problem, but you know, over here in the good old United States, uh, it's no longer a problem. 
that's with farm pork. Okay, you get into the pig, you eat a medium rare piece of pork from a wild hog. And you may literally have the diarrhea for, for four or five months and it may kill you. Uh, so obviously you got, you got to cook it, cook it all the way through, but it's still, it, it's still an out, outstanding cut of meat uh, in my uh, humble uh, pin yun. So, oh, I totally uh, agree. Yep. It's, yep. It is uh, the best thing is the ribs. In oh, my, I totally agree. The wild hog. Yeah, so I'll just sprinkle it with a little garlic salt and some olive oil and just throw it directly in the oven. Great quote. Yeah. Now that's oh that's you know, yeah. Right <laughs> yeah, no, and, and that would require a little bit more work, but I mean, but like he says, I mean, God, everybody likes pork ribs and they're they're freaking outstanding. Uh, you know, we uh we got a guy who who hunts on some of the property that we really don't that um good a good family friend of ours hunts kind of the outskirts of Rancho Bandito and he um, kind of another sub story here. He, uh, over the kind of like July and August of this year, he kept going out and he had those kind of those tripod feeders, you know what I'm saying? The ones with three legs and uh, they weren't overly tall. Um, and, and they, they were actually in pretty decent shape. Uh, and he would go out there and they kept getting knocked down. And, and we were kind of thinking, well, you know, gosh, you know, what's, what's going on, you know? Um, uh, and, 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 you know, every time they put the game camera up there, they never seem to be able to catch uh, any of the, the, the pictures, you know, of, of what was doing all this damage. Well, uh, it ends up, they, <laughs> they ended up finding out what it was. And I think dad and I kind of suspected that this was probably just a very, very large hog. Um, you know, we've, we've over the years seen these feral hogs go underneath a, you know, five strand barbed wire fence and literally just shave the back off of them and they don't even stop running, you know? Uh, so you can imagine, you know, if they have time and what they can do to smooth, you know, uh, feeder poles, right. They can absolutely destroy them. Anyways, uh, our, our, our good friend, he actually sent us kind of some paperwork today and uh, one of the pictures he sent us <laughs> included this, I mean, giant 300 pound black hog. And uh, boy, the teeth, and I need to ask him, I forgot if he did something with the teeth, the teeth on this dude. Well, I mean, they weren't, you know, wasn't going to set any record or anything, uh, but they were, they were fantastic. Just an absolute incredible specimen. Is and uh, mount or anything or, you mount? know, I, I don't know what he did. I, I don't know what he was going to do with it. I just kind of, I kind of asked where the location was. He goes, yeah, I think that's the guy who was giving us problems. I'm like, well, I can imagine I mean, it just, boy, what a monster. Uh, and that was just really, really, really thick country. Um, really pr pretty much hundred percent hardwood bottoms with, with Creek bottoms and whatnot. So, you know, again, having, you know, the, the corn feeder, we always talk about the benefits of feeding, having that corn feeder out there was, um, was, was really, really the thing to do. Um, so it was, it was great. It was great, but knocked a, knocked a big, big piggy out of the, uh, out of the process. Um, okay. So let's talk about some of the, the facts about wild hogs. And this is something that I think I pretty much misquote all the time. So, uh, it's actually kind of funny. They've got that picture of a stork here with a little bundle in its mouth and, uh, a pig and, or something. what's that? <laughs> A stork with a pig, like a yeah, pig? no, oh. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, there's probably yeah. I think that's what they're trying. There's no pig out. Oh. They actually should have done that. I don't know if this is like a clip art thing or anything like that. Yeah. But so it says uh, prolific breeders. It says females can start breeding as early as six months old. Normally eight to ten months old. I mean that that is absolutely incredible to me. Uh, because, and then again, you, you wonder why they're so damn prolific. Well, wait till you see what, <laughs> wait till you see all the other stuff that I'm about to, to read and read to you here. I mean, the, these critters were meant to be here and they are meant to be here in, in, in big numbers, gestation, three and a half months. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, which I think a deer is like uh, is like uh, seven months or something like or six months, something like that. Weaning three weeks after <laughs> birth. 
these damn human hogs, these damn human kids that we got, those sons of those sons of guns ain't weaned till they're 32. I'm, I'm still not weaned. You know, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, the litter size, typically four to six, but as many as 10 to 12. I, I'll be really honest with you. In, in all my years of pig hunting, I don't think I've ever seen a litter size that was four to six. It seems like it's always eight. Oh, always yeah. eight or, or 10. And, and in all reality, when it gets up to that eight to 10 range, so damn many of them, you can't really count them anyway. <laughs> it is unbelievable. And then here we go again, litter frequency, one or two litters per year. Uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and side with the whole uh, probably two litters. Okay. So say, let, let, let's do a little, a little, uh, a little math here. Okay. So actually we're not, well, I'll do the talking, you do the math. So, uh, all right. We got females that can, uh, can have babies at six months. And uh, let's see, the litter sizes are between, we'll just say they're, they're on the high side, they're 10, uh, and they have two litters per year. I mean, so, so you're, you're, you're talking, you know, one generate, one family, uh, one sow can have, you know, 20 piglets, mm -hmm. okay, that are breedable six months, uh, six months after that. Uh, I mean, exponential. And, and, that oh, means it really is exponential growth. It is. It, it is. It, it, it is unbelievable. Does the article uh, talk about, uh, I don't want to jump ahead, so I'm not no. going to ruin it. If, if no, I go am, ahead. Does it talk about uh, how many you'd have to kill in a year just no. to maintain? Because no. I remember who, who was telling us that. I can't remember. Or did I see it? Some, I don't remember what it was, but I remember Man, hearing you know, it that, that you have to that kill be... something like at least 75% of the population <laughs> Like every year, just to no. keep the numbers like the same because they right boost right exponentially. Wow, so. wow! No, you know what kidding. it was. You know what it was. It was when back in the day when, uh, and I still like to do this on occasion. Go right. on YouTube and watch them do hunt like night hunt hogs and oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I think yeah. it was one of the, one of those channels or something that they were talking about stuff like that. Wow! Oh uh, yeah, I mean they pile them up, but they're still. I mean, <laughs> man, you know, that going. is. crazy crazy yeah it's absolutely insane all right hold on one second i need to text my oldest daughter because i can still hear the tv on and they have school tomorrow let's see go to bed you are weaned i love you good night no breeding in six months oh my god Ugh. yeah mm-hmm yeah. So, okay. And then of course it talks about, um, it talks about, you know, some landowners are, uh, are more than happy to, to let people, um, you know, come in there and, and hunt hogs and whatnot. It's kind of a win-win. I, I completely agree with that, but you know, especially back in the day, but now there's so much damn liability issues. And, and, and the other thing is, uh, no offense to our, our viewers that are from some of the states I'm about to mention, but, you know, um, uh, Connecticut, you know, Rhode Island, Vermont, um, Puerto Rico, um, South America, all those other states that don't have a lot of hogs. Uh, you know, a lot of those dudes will pay big money to come to Texas and shoot these things. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so that though I agree that, you know, there's some there'll be some landowners that are up for that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I don't think it's that easy. Um, but, but, uh, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, and Jimmy and I were just talking about this. I am really looking forward to maybe trying to, to get my hand on some hams, <laughs> uh, and so that, uh, I can put them on the, you know, get them good and cleaned up and then, you know, put them on the smoker, you know, for spring and for summer, things of that nature. I I'll tell you, that is how you sustain your hunting focus. Uh, throughout the throughout the, the hot months and whatnot is is by you know eating your eating what you, you harvested that year like I hope our my co-host here will be uh, you know dining on some delicious turkey this year because oh, um, I don't even shoot one wood. did you shoot one last year nope I don't think you did. oh that's right yeah. no it's stupid COVID crap <laughs> yeah well they're gonna that's you know, anyway well. I'm 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 confident that won't be an issue this year, but uh, of course we'll have any turkeys. But you know that that's a lie. Yeah, I'm um, sure you have none. 
Yeah, no, no. Uh-huh. Oh, God, my dad. Well, I don't, I don't know. You know, maybe you know, maybe we need to hire turkey assassins. I can't figure it out. Like, it's, it's okay. They're birds. Okay. It's, it's not like we've got leopards walking around. You know, it's not that big of a deal. But, yeah, listen, you know, feral hogs, they are... Um, they are Texas's favorite animal to love and hate. I, I think that's a real fair assessment of, of how people of people think about them. So while you were uh, you were mentioning this was uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, or, yep. right? The magazine. I uh, went on and searched for that. To, I wanted to see the picture of the the giant hog you mentioned. I couldn't find that article. However, I did find something interesting about. It's like the. Uh, uh, the nuisance area of the Texas Parks and Wildlife and yeah. feral hogs, and it says uh, wild pigs are now the United States' most abundant, free-ranging introduced ungulate. You know, ungulate Ooh. being animal with hooves. And it says uh-huh. there's a map of Texas here, a county map, mm-hmm. and it says it shows every county in Texas uh, is occupied by feral swine. But as of 2019, all mm-hmm. except El Paso County. Really, that's interesting. God, that is interesting. Now, why? I mean, well, I, as far as the habitat is concerned, uh, I mean, it, it 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 totally makes sense. Um, I I I, I I'll tell you that that's actually a real interesting thing. You know, when you get out to El Paso, you know, Brewster County, Big Bend County. You know, you're that or big Bend country rather. That's when you're you're talking about real issues with carrying capacity. Uh, you're talking you're talking one unit, okay, which is a cow calf, okay, one unit for a hundred acres. So one mama cow and one calf per hundred acres. Think about that, okay. Whereas you know you you come up to even. You even property like where the uh, Rancho Bandito is, where you're, you know, in good years, you're you're talking, you're talking eight to ten to fifteen units per acre. You know that and that's in the real wet years, of course. Um, so so think about that. You know, so you have a, a really kind of fragile ecosystem, right? Uh, and you got your mule deer out there, the the native animals, mule deer, javelina, and then of course the Texas bighorn. Well. You, you, you throw in you know, the Audad, and we've talked about the Audad before, how that's kind of a, a bittersweet thing. But then you talk about feral hogs, and, 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 and that, that's a whole nother thing that, that I really haven't thought about. Now, you know, I, think an, I think a good question to ask would be, okay, when the hogs get out there, and they probably are already out there in, in, in some form or fashion, you know, are they, you know, they, I, the, my guess that they would stick to the lower, um, the lower elevations. So, you know, maybe it could be said that they wouldn't be as much of a problem for the, uh, the big horns as they would for the mule deer. Um, it, it's, it's yeah. very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. But when you said mule deer, it to just maybe remember to tell you something yesterday, last night we we're driving through our neighborhood. On the, in the ranger, I hate and you. Uh, came up to three axis deer. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you with every inch of my being right now. I was like, because oh, you fuck. know, you know <laughs> that gets me going. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> so no, that's okay. <laughs> that, and listen, you honestly, you need to get you. There's who's that guy? Tim Wells. He's a, the, called the Slock Master. I mean, he shoots things with a blow dart gun. You nice. need to become for the oh my god, uh, your cup will overflow with with access. <laughs> that is fan. You know what you need to do? You need to be you need to be one of those radicals that are on the uh, you know on kind of your like neighborhood you know Facebook page and be like we the neighborhood people of something New Braunfels have a problem with the axis deer. They will kill <laughs> our children. It right. will take our wives when we are at work. We must kill every axis deer. <laughs> and I, I, Jimmy, will make Volunteer. the sacrifice to kill all these axes. Who's with me? You know? <laughs> I mean, you, you really I've thought couldn't. about it. <laughs> yeah, and all these guys were like, are you kidding me, dude? There's no freaking way. I'm going to let you do all that. Now, that, that, that I'll tell you what, the axis deer are, are another delicious problem to have. Uh, needless to say. 
Yep. Well, well, that is all I think I've got. Uh, you know, here it is, late February, and it's gotten a little wetter. I definitely not, uh, definitely not ready to pull out Noah's Ark, but I. <laughs> Uh, the weather trend seems to be loosening up a little bit and uh, hopefully we will, we will get some more rain. Um, it's just been a real stay of Texas uh, in, in general has just been continued to been real dry. So uh, not the kind of start you want, but uh, it, nothing you can do about it. So keep those protein feeders humming. There is no doubt about it. I, I would, I would love to see, uh, talk about protein feeders and all of our little our feed stores that we love so dearly. You know, if their business has gone up because you know their their customers are having to buy more protein because of the lack of natural forage out there. Um, I think that'll level off. Obviously, if we get more rain and then when, when spring break, sp- spring green up comes, but um, it, it'll, it'll it'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, more of the story. Get out there and shoot some pigs. Absolutely. Uh, you can Absolutely. do it in a lot of different ways. So. Yep. Kill them all. Yeah. Kill them all. Yeah. So you, you got night shooting. You obviously, you can track shoot them at night. Yeah. You can track them with dogs. Yeah. Yeah. You can shoot them from the air. Yeah. You can, uh, sh- I guess, shoot them in a trap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You can You can pretty much do it any, uh, any legal the, way possible. Yeah. That's like the, if there is a benefit, it's it's that right oh for sure have fun oh for sure for sure yeah <laughs> like yeah. Your aim. yeah yeah you know and 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 i i'd say you know before you go out there and and, and you tackle these uh before you you go out there and really tackle these things i think uh, i would definitely look into um especially if you intend to, to cut them up and eat them you know let's make sure you got a good sharp knife with you you're gonna need it uh, oh, yeah. they, they are not easy to clean. And that's why a lot of guys, uh, will just go for the, um, you know, we'll just go for the, for the prime cuts. But I mean, you get, you get a hog that's, you know, uh, 75 pounds and under, man, that's, that's a perfect one to throw on a, to throw on the smoker or throw on the grill. And it's, it's worth, uh, um, it's worth the trouble. I think. Yep. I totally agree. Yep. Oh, thank you. So mm-hmm. Laura just brought the my mail in to the office. Oh, perfect! And I'm secretary. <laughs> You're my secretary. Yes. Hi, hi, Laura. Uh, I have the headphones on. So she, um, he says hi. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I had uh, I had Poppy here <clears throat> sitting in in my office as well. She was watching mm-hmm. the the iPad babysitter while we started this. Oh, because, fun. Laura and Jeb were at, at dinner. All right. So, uh, all right, Poppy, time to go to bed. Nice. Yeah. Me. All right. My girl, my, oh yeah, that, that, that's common. Get, get used to that. It doesn't get any, they, they don't get any, um, yeah, whatever. So, right. yeah. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, all right, folks. Mm-hmm. You heard it here first. Probably not the first time, but you know, shoot some pigs anyway. Yeah, we'll, some pigs. We'll, we, if we make it down to the Rancho Bandito and shoot mm-hmm. some pigs, we'll hopefully get some pics and hopefully some funny stories that we can tell. Definitely next week. Definitely. <laughs> so, Maybe we should invite some of these people that are uh, are are uh, spamming and not spamming us, but yeah, I guess they are spamming us. That'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, I, we say, why don't you bring your two and a half million dollars down and you know. <laughs> That's right. I mean, after I'll all, give you, I'll we give you my $100 the, gift card then. Yeah. I mean, after all, we are the ones who got ripped up. I mean, this is, you know, we're <laughs> ripped off rather. Uh, that's awesome. I love it. All right. I think that'll do it. What do you think? Yep. I think that's it, my friend. All right. Awesome. You want to close this one or me? Yep. I'll, I'll, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do the closing. So right. thank you very much, folks. We, we certainly appreciate it. We love doing this. Any thoughts, ideas, questions, comments, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. And uh, as always support your local feed store. Thanks for listening to the feed banded podcast. 
If you like what we discuss on the show, be sure to sign up to our email list to get even more killer hunting ideas, tips, tricks, and exclusive deals on innovative hunting gear and services delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up over at FeedBandit.com or simply by texting the word BANDIT to 33777. See you on the next one. And remember, support your local feed store.